this is Jay. We're going to use Kurt's notes to talk about the subtypes of invasive breast cancer. If you already haven't, look at the prior video of the general overview of breast cancer and make sure to go to Kurt's notes. It's got great resources for path residents and pathologists alike. So let's begin. So subtypes Tumor showing a special histologic pattern in greater than or equal to 90% of the tumor are designated as pure special tumor. Otherwise, they are designated as no special type, which accounts for the majority of breast cancer cases, including mixed patterns. So, common things being common, let's talk about NST, no special type. The older name is invasive ductal carcinoma. Now we say invasive breast carcinoma of no special type. It's a large and heterogeneous group that is essentially a wastebasket, including all cancers that don't fit into one of the specific groups. When a special type makes up 10 to 90% of tumor, report as mixed. Invasive breast cancer, no special type and special subtype. So the special morphologic patterns as opposed to subtypes include medullary pattern. So this is described as well circumscribed, high grade cytologic features. And I mean, this cell can fit five, six of these lymphocytes, a pushing margin, synxial architecture, and prominent tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, as we can see here in the picture. It has a better outcome than other stage matched high grade cancers, likely due to the tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, usually triple negative, basal life and associated with BRCA1 related tumors. Other special morphologic patterns include invasive carcinoma with neuroendocrine differentiation, which is also seen by IHC, not currently of any clinical significance, more common in mucinous and solid papillary carcinomas. Must be sure to consider a much rarer primary neuroendocrine tumor, carcinoma and or metastasis. And the histologic features of neuroendocrine I've been taught are like salt and pepper chromatin. Other rare subtypes include carcinoma with osteoclast-like giant cells, pleomorphic pattern, choriocarcinomatous pattern, melanotic pattern, oncocytic pattern, lipid-rich pattern, glycogen-rich, clear cell pattern, and sebaceous pattern. I've only seen two of these subtypes and the rest I haven't seen, illustrating just how rare these rare subtypes are. Microinvasive carcinoma. This is an invasive breast carcinoma that's less than or equal to one millimeter in size, usually adjacent to an area of DCIS, often high grade. Earliest recognizable form of invasive carcinoma. It's invasion beyond the myoepithelium and it's small angulated clusters of tumor cells infiltrating the stroma with often desmoplastic stromal changes. It has better prognosis than larger invasive tumors and often multifocal. And if any single invasive focus is larger than one millimeter, then it's invasive carcinoma, not microinvasive carcinoma. Be cautious when, when diagnosing this on core biopsy as there could be more invasion on excision. It's often a great idea to get levels to exclude larger foci of invasion. Invasive lobular carcinoma. It's composed of discohesive cells that are often individually dispersed or arranged in a single file linear pattern. It counts for 10% of all invasive breast carcinomas, and most are luminal A, which are ER and PR positive, HER2 negative, and it's driven by a CDH1 mutation, it leads to a loss of E cadherin function, leading to cellular discohesion. Often there's a little host reaction or disturbance of background architecture. So these I've been told by my staff, they are very sneaky. Occasional intracytoplasmic lumina and can have signet ring cells. Often low grade nuclei and within invasive lobular carcinoma, you can have pleomorphic lobular carcinomas. It's the same discohesive growth but with marked nuclear pleomorphism, in fact, greater than four times the size of a lymphocyte, which is equivalent to like high-grade DCIS cytology. 
an IHC can confirm loss of ECAD herein and are helpful in confirming the diagnosis, but if you have to compare the IHC versus H&E morphology, morphology is more important. So the different IHC stains you can use are ECAD herein, which my institution uses, P120 catenin and beta catenin. So the normal epithelium will show membranous staining. Lobular carcinoma will show negative E cadherin, cytoplasmic P120 catenin, and absent beta catenin membrane staining. And then no special type invasive breast carcinoma will show membrane staining for all E cadherin, P120 catenin, and beta catenin. Let's talk about tubular carcinoma. This is a low-grade invasive carcinoma composed of well-formed tubules with open lumina lined by a single layer of neoplastic cells. They account for 1.5% of invasive carcinomas and often in old women. It's often luminal A subtype, ER and PR positive, and HER2 negative. It's small, angulated to ovoid glands and tubules with open lumina set in fibrous des desmoplastic stroma and relatively low grade nuclei. Remember, greater than 90% of tumor must have this morphology, as is the rule for all special types, and it has a great prog relatively great prognosis. Another one with relatively good prognosis is cribriform carcinoma. This is a low-grade invasive carcinoma composed of islands of tumor cells with well-defined cheese hole or cribriform spaces. It's luminal A subtype, ERPR positive, HER2 negative, and well-defined rounded to angulated cribriform spaces like cribriform DCIS, but without surrounding myoepithelial cells set in a desmoplastic stroma. It has low nuclear grade and it's very rare. Let's talk about mucinous carcinoma. Invasive breast cancer are characterized by clusters of epithelial cells suspended in pools of abundant extracellular mucin. It's well circumscribed grossly, so it can mimic a benign process, but it, it's uncommon and has luminal A molecular type, ERPR positive, HER2 negative, low to intermediate nuclear grade, and frequent neuroendocrine differentiation. It has good prognosis. We want to look also let's talk about mucinous cyst adenocarcinoma this is invasive breast cancer characterized by cystic structures lined by tall columnar cells with intracytoplasmic and intracystic mucin like pancreatic ipmns or ovarian ovarian mucinous carcinomas let's talk about invasive micropapillary carcinoma these are invasive breast cancer composed of small hollow or morula like clusters of malignant cells surrounded by clear spaces with inside out growth pattern. The pure form is uncommon and is often mixed with other patterns. It can be luminal A or B, ER and PR positive, HER2 negative usually. There is no fibrovascular core as this is micropapillary by definition and they have characteristic empty spaces around the cells with delicate stromal framework and show reverse polarity, meaning the apical surface faces outward stroma. And you can see it on the EMA stain where it stains the outside more strongly. And often eosinophilic granular cytoplasm with intermediate to high grade nuclei and cuboidal to columnar cells. There's significantly more lymphovascular invasion and positive lymph nodes, but when stage matched with NST tumors, not significantly worse survival. Let's talk about metaplastic carcinoma. This is invasive breast carcinomas with differentiation of epithelium towards squamous or mesenchymal looking elements. It usually presents as a mass. It's rare, accounting for less than 1% of all breast cancers, and there are several distinct patterns with some overlap, often mixed, low-grade adenosquamous carcinoma. There's well-developed rounded glands and tubules associated with solid squamous nests infiltrating through desmoplastic stroma, sometimes associated cannonball lymphoid aggregates. It has a good prognosis. Fibromatosis-like metaplastic carcinoma is bland spindled cells 
with pale eosinophilic cytoplasm and slender nuclei and stroma with variable collagen, only mild nuclear atypia, often arranged in fascicles. Some cells may be plumper epithelioid, also good prognosis. Spindle cell carcinoma, atypical spindle cells with a variety of architectural patterns, fascicles, herringbone, elongate to plump spindle cells with moderate to high grade cytologic atypia, often associated with inflammation and includes a spectrum of tumors from sarcomatoid spindle cell carcinoma to myoepithelial carcinoma and has a worse prognosis. You can have squamous cell carcinoma, which is pure squamous cell carcinoma, often cystic, and you must exclude a metastasis and has worse prognosis. And metaplastic carcinoma with heterologous mesenchymal differentiation, essentially a carcinosarcoma where you have heterologous elements that can include chondroid, osseous, and rhabdoid components. See a little bit of chondroid elements here. Epithelial and mesenchymal components can have variable atypia. Sometimes extensive sampling is necessary to find the epithelial component in order to exclude a primary sarcoma. The IHC a uh, vast majority do not express ERPR or HER2, meaning triple negative. However, they do express some epithelial markers, including P63, high molecular weight cytokeratins like CK56 and AE1, AE3. Uh, it's negative for CK7 and CD34, and could be plus minus for SMA, CD10, Desmond, and beta catenin. Um, Molecularly, these are driven often by TP53, PIK3CA, and WNT pathway mutations, and may be derived from late D differentiation or basal-like stem cells. And clinically, it usually has much fewer lymph node metastasis. Let's talk about carcinoma with apocrine differentiation, or sometimes called just apocrine carcinoma. Uh, it's an invasive carcinoma with large cells with abundant eosinophilic granular cytoplasm and large nuclei with prominent nucleoli, resembling apocrine sweat glands. Uh, they're androgen receptor positive and often triple negative and often presents as a solid growth with high mitotic index, being grade two or three, and favorable clinical prognosis. It's often seen in older women, low stage, and androgen deprivation therapy is a potential treatment option. Now let's talk about the rare types of breast cancer. There's the tall cell carcinoma with reverse polarity. It's characterized by tall columnar cells with reverse nuclear polarity arranged in solid and solid papillary patterns, most commonly associated with IDH2 mutations. It kind of reminds you of tall cell papillary thyroid carcinoma and it expresses both high and low molecular weight cytokeratins, including CK7 and CK56 and calretinin. It is triple negative and indolent. And then what I find fascinating is that most salivary gland tumors can occur in the breast, where they are usually relatively more indolent than their head and neck counterparts and often triple negative. So these include acinic cell carcinoma, clear to granular epithelial cells containing zymogen granules arranging, arranged in glands and solid sheets. It is triple negative and with an intermediate behavior. There's adenoid cystic carcinoma, an invasive carcinoma composed of epithelial and myoepithelial cells arranged in tubules, cribiform, and solid patterns associated with basophilic matrix and basement membrane material. Frequent mid nfib fusions a triple negative, but generally good prognosis, unlike in head and neck, cured by surgery alone. Uh, secretory carcinoma, epithelial cells with intracytoplasmic secretory vacuoles and extracellular eosinophilic bubbly secretions arranged in a variable architecture. Frequent ETV6 and TREC3 fusions, triple negative and generally indolent. Uh, mycoepidermoid carcinoma, composed of a mixture of one, mucinous cells, two, squamous cells, and three, intermediate cells arranged in a solid and cystic pattern. Frequent mammal two fusions, and triple negative, good prognosis if low grade. And lastly, but not least, polymorphous adenocarcinoma, monotonous neoplastic cells with a variety of architectures, including large nests surrounded by cords and single file growth, triple negative. 
So just to recap, we talked about the different types of invasive breast carcinoma. Uh, there's the no special type, and the several morphologic patterns include medullary pattern, which is well circumscribed, high grade pushing margins with tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, invasive carcinoma with neuroendocrine differentiation. We talked about microinvasive carcinoma, which is defined by invasive, invasive breast carcinoma less than or equal to one millimeter in size and usually adjacent to an area of high grade DCIS. Uh, we talked about invasive lobular carcinoma, which is our discohesive cells arranged in single file linear pattern without a uh, stromal response oftentimes, and ERPR positive, HER2 negative. And you can have pleomorphic lobular carcinoma, which is defined by the nuclei being greater than four times the size of a lymphocyte, or the cells being greater than four times the size of a lymphocyte. Uh, we talked about tubular carcinoma. Again, these have to be greater than 90%. Uh, they have good prognosis and well-formed tubules with open lumina lined by a single layer of neoplastic cells against a fibrous desmoplastic stroma. We talked about cribriform carcinoma. Again, has to be greater than 90% of this architecture. It's defined by well-defined cribriform spaces. We talked about mucinous carcinomas, uh, clusters of epithelial cells suspended in pools of abundant extracellular mucin. We talked about invasive micropapillary carcinoma, how they show reverse polarity, which can be seen in, especially highlighted by the EMA stain. There's no fibrovascular cores and has small hollow or morula-like clusters of malignant cells with clear spaces surrounding each morula. We talked about metaplastic carcinoma and with the distinct patterns it can have include, including low-grade adenosquamous carcinoma, fibromatosis like metaplastic carcinoma, spindle cell carcinoma, pure squamous cell carcinoma, and metaplastic carcinoma with heterologous mesenchymal differentiation. Uh, they're oftentimes triple negative and stain through P63 and high molecular weight cytokeratins. We talked about apocrine carcinoma and other rare and rare types, we talked about tall cell carcinoma with reverse polarity and the salivary gland equivalents in the breast, including acinic cell carcinoma, adenoid cystic carcinoma, driven by 6-9 MIF NFIB fusion, secretory carcinoma, driven by 12-15 ETV6 NTREC3, uh, mucoepidermoid carcinoma, driven by uh, mammal 2 fusion, and polymorphous adenocarcinoma. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe. Until next time, we'll see you. Bye.